in terms of what drives me and the colleagues I work with, it's always the women that we've, we've engaged with over the years. I ended up, by some peculiar long-winded routes, working on a maternity mission station in Baputaswana. Not that I'm a missionary or anything, I just happened to end up there. And when I saw these women giving birth, I thought, if we get birth right, we'll get the world right. And it was a complete road to Damascus experience, and it completely changed everything I wanted to do with my life. So then I came back to the UK, realised you didn't have to train as a nurse to be a midwife, trained just as a midwife, and then did about 20 years of midwifery. And that then led kind of naturally by a process of osmosis almost into a research career. And I remember going into the office uh, when there, was a, there were some interviews being held for senior midwives. And I went in and said, I want to be a research midwife. And they said, there's no such thing, can't do that. So I thought, right, well, I'm going to do it. So that was where the research career kind of kicked in. Um, and then subsequently, I, I ended up in a university as a consequence of that. So it was all very organic, really. The biggest influence in my life has been the women that we've been working or I've been working with, uh, both, both as a midwife and also in research, research subsequently. So some of the concepts and the ideas that, that I've developed over time with colleagues around the research agenda that we're currently pursuing have only been generated by our encounters with women during their pregnancy, labour and birth. And some of the, unjust, the, the injustices that we've wanted to address have also been a consequence of that, both witnessing it in the UK and in, in other places. <music> Trying to keep a thread going around my research area, which is around physiological labour and birth, when the whole world is moving in the opposite direction. So towards increased techno technocracy, increased surveillance, in childbirth, which actually is not for the best for many women and babies. And that has been very, um, there's been a lot of problems in engaging with that research agenda consistently over the years. And that probably has been the biggest challenge over time. People will sometimes say to me, why have kids? What's the point in having kids? And my response is always, because you will never laugh so much in your life as you do when you've got children. And that actually does have relevance for the research work and for the practice work that we do, because actually, at the moment, women and babies are, or women particularly, are fearful. They're very fearful in pregnancy and they're very fearful in labour because of the risk-averse agenda that we're currently engaging with across the world. And I think that's very problematic. I want to bring joy back in to pregnancy and birth. I want to bring back that laughter because ultimately I do believe, again, it's what makes the world go round. What makes me most sad and sometimes also want to cry is the antagonism that there is in the world at the moment towards women in general and particularly towards women in terms of our research area, so pregnancy, labour and birth, who want to have a positive experience of their, of their labour and birth. And some of the trolling that happens online against those women is very, again, very sad and very, very upsetting. One of the other things that makes me upset or, and is important for young researchers to realise when they're thinking of coming into research is that your colleagues can occasionally make you sad and distressed and even sometimes make you heartbroken, almost literally heartbroken. For example, if you find your work has been taken, which does sometimes happen by colleagues, or if you find that you produce a piece of work you've worked on for years or you know, at least months and it's rejected by a reviewer, or you put in for a grant application that takes you months to write and again it's rejected, it can literally make your heart hurt make your heart broken, literally. And I think that's very important to realise that you have to engage with that degree of disappointment if you're going to come into research. I've been reflecting on what advice I would give myself and actually I wouldn't really change very much. I think I would say, follow your passion. And I would say that to new researchers as well. 
or people going into clinical practice, follow your passion and keep with it, even when it's sometimes out of fashion. So some of the things that we've been working on have been highly unfashionable at various stages of my career, and it's been incredibly difficult to keep the momentum going because of that. But actually what happens is they come back into fashion again. So if you stay with your passion, you will come back into fashion. I don't really mean that to rhyme, but it does seem to. If you follow trends, you'll end up all over the place. So I think that would, I would keep that advice to myself and to other researchers in the future. Generally, I've, I have felt very supported. And again, I think that's a, a question of, of demonstrating integrity yourself because then other people will support that with you. So I think that's a, there's a kind of reciprocity between supporting and being supported. In terms of supporting other women, just as an example, our research team is 90% women, and I also run a European network which has got 120 scientists from 32 countries, of which probably 80% are women. And that come, they are architects and engineers and economists and midwives and obstetricians and so on and so on. So that the um, having that huge network means that people between them, it almost becomes it almost becomes normal that there are women engaged at that level when you have those kinds of networks. So I think that's the, the best way to encourage support, not to make it particularly obvious that you're doing that, but just to create situations in which women can engage on a level playing field. Women do view the world from a different perspective, ask different questions, get different answers. And so if you put women and men together in the research field, you get a much more rounded view of what, of what the truth is.